Now I haven't done a lot of research yet on this particular leaf discoloration issue. My guess, my hunch would be that it's some kind of What's up Lazy Dog fam? Hope everybody out there is having a fantastic day. We just got back from a little three day vacation at the Gulf Coast and man it's crazy how much some of this stuff in the garden can grow in just three days. I was hoping we would get some rain while we were gone. We didn't. I did water everything really well before we left. Nothing died while we were gone. Had a few things that were looking a little pitiful earlier today when we got back. So I've been watering all afternoon. And so in this video, I want to take you around, show you how fast some of this stuff is growing. We got a lot of stuff we need to harvest. I'm not going to harvest in this video, probably do a lot of harvesting on the next video. But today I just want to take you around, show you everything that's going on in all 10, maybe we call it 11 of our garden plots. So let's start off here with our indeterminate tomatoes. Most of these, if not all of these, are heirloom varieties. We did have a few weak links, especially on that back row there that we had to remove. But the plants that are left are looking pretty good for the most part. These need a little water when we got back. They perked up nicely this afternoon. They're hanging in there. This heat has been really, really tough on them, but they're hanging in there and we've been enjoying quite a few of these so far some of these bottom fruits that have been ripening look at the size on those rascals there those are going to be good when they ripen up so the ones we've been eating so far would be the paul robeson which are down on that end we've been eating some german johnson's which are on that back row a few of the kellogg's breakfast a few of those giant crimson's from mi gardener and sampling a lot of these we haven't tried every single one yet because we haven't had a ripe tomato from every variety yet but we're getting close i think this one right here might be the georgia streak variety that one looks like it's getting really close that's a beautiful looking mater right there so the plants we've got most of them i don't know that plant there looks kind of pitiful but most of them are hanging in there they do all right when we get temps in the mid to high 80s we start getting days in the 90s they look pitiful then they recover when it cools down a little bit so it is what it is but our trellising system here is working pretty well for us we do have a few of these if i step through here like this one that has reached the top there i don't know what i'm going to do there if i'm going to just cut the top out of it there or maybe see if it will kind of gracefully fall over the top there and maybe let it just grow back down I haven't decided what we're going to do yet there but we do got a few of them that have reached the top of that conduit here's a few more nice looking fruits i want to show you so this is the kellogg's breakfast variety we lost two of those plants we still have two here that will hopefully grow us a big mater for our mater growing competition and it looks like this plant right here might give us close to a winning mater those in the back that are green look like a pound and a half possibly so we'll see what happens with those those right there are mighty close to being ready to pick and although we have dealt with some heat stress and some disease issues on a few of these heirloom tomatoes i have not seen the first leaf footed bug on any of these plants I haven't seen many leaf footed bugs at all so far, which tells me that our spray program with that Azera first warm season, we've added that into the rotation, tells me that that's working pretty well. I've seen a few leaf footed bugs on our cucumbers, which I'll show you later in the video, but none on these tomatoes, which is a really, really good sign. Moving on from those tomatoes, we have our glass gem corn right here. And man, this stuff really shot up while we were gone. I swear it was only about two and a half foot tall when we left and some of it's on up close to four foot tall now. This stuff, I swear it grew a foot and a half in just three days. We did side dress it not too long ago and you can tell that that stuff is feeding those plants well. We got some beautiful corn in there. I got the drip running on it right now as you can see and probably going to let this run all night long we'll soak those rows good this corn will be able to drink it up real quick but really really happy with how our glass gem corn is looking so far nice consistency out there just really good looking plants 
And then behind that corn, we have this plot here where we've got zipper peas, peanuts, and some okra over there. Our zipper peas are looking pretty good. We've got a little bit of uneven height here just because it's been so dry and I've had to water them a bunch with this overhead sprinkler and the watering from it is not 100 percent even so those in the middle of the road get a little more water than these down here on the end that's why you see a little bit of height difference here but our plants are looking pretty good i've sprayed these twice with liquid seven probably going to hit them again pretty soon because we can see some of the plants are starting to put out some runners right there see one these down here in the middle here starting to put out some runners as well so we should start seeing blooms pretty soon we're really really happy with how those two double rows of zipper peas are looking so far if we scoot on over here we have our virginia jumbo peanuts which didn't germinate as well as i'd like but now this double row is starting to fill in pretty good there's a few little gaps there these plants are looking really really good starting to kind of fill in that gap and get a full double row there i don't know if you can tell i did come in here and rake a little soil up on those kind of healed them up a little bit i don't know if you're supposed to heal peanuts or not but it just seemed like a good idea something that i ought to be doing and um help kind of bunch those plants together a little bit get some more weed suppression in the middle so although we got a few gaps i'm pretty happy with how that's coming along then we got our oak tree right here i did see a flower or two last week i haven't checked for any pods these are looking a little pitiful heat's been working on these and i need to get some water on these later today but they're hanging in there oak tree's pretty drought tolerant hopefully we can start harvesting some pretty soon wait there we go let's see a little couple little tiny pods right there so hopefully we'll have some okra soon to go with those tomatoes over there and as we're walking to the next plot everybody say hey to the girls hey girls they're getting very very excited about a plot i'm going to show you in just a minute they've just been staring at it brooklyn says i've been torturing them but we're going to hook them up probably in the next week over here in the dream garden we've got a good bit of empty space in this plot where we've already harvested five rows of taters so we'll have two more rows of taters in here our kennebecs and our german butterballs are still hanging in here so we have our straw versus soil experiment and then our cut versus hole experiment with the kennebecs looks like the kennebecs may hang in a little longer than the german butterballs start to see you know a little bit of the signs of death on these german butterballs here plants are starting to fall over a little bit so we might be harvesting those within the next week we'll just keep a close eye on them then we have our valencia peanuts here and i think we got probably close to 95 percent germination on those they came up really really good and uh, stella's wallering over there but uh that will probably fill in that double row really nicely within the next few weeks behind that plot we've got our watermelon plot here which took a while to get going but as you can see it's finally going so this real dense piece of it right here is our seedless watermelons our orange crisp with our tender sweet orange pollinizer and then as so we get over here we've got the ones we planted a little later not every transplant made it but the ones that did make it are looking good so we've got another row of orange and then we've got these alibaba watermelons here on these last two rows we move back over here to where the first ones we planted are we can start to see some nice fruits developing here so that's a seedless watermelon there the round one that's one of the orange crisp we've got several of those in there there's another one right in there there you go and then we've got one right there too there are several of those in there and i did see one of the tender sweet orange ones the other day as well i can't find it right now but they are long and skinny looking whereas the seedless ones are round here we go right here so this is the pollinizer the seeded variety in there you can tell they look a good bit different than those round seedless ones i showed you a second ago so here's the deal with these watermelons 
we're not going to set any records for watermelon production per thousand square feet we're not going to get skunked either we've got plenty of seedless ones out there very optimistic about this now we'll talk about this more on future videos but this no-till plot or these no-till plots i have man they're aggravating in the beginning to get plants up and going to get transplants to survive to get seeds to germinate but once they do it's just amazing how much stuff grows in these plots hardly no pest issues no disease issues don't have to water them near as much it's just really aggravating in the beginning now i told you earlier that i got something for our girls over there we've been slowly moving them closer to what i'm about to show you so looky here looky here isn't that pretty this is that cover crop we planted in this no-till plot several videos ago we've got that ford sorghum sedan grass in there we've also got those red ripper peas so you can see the pea leaves there you can see that sorghum as well we got really good germination on this after we packed that seed in running over it with the lawnmower using those tires to kind of improve our seed to soil contact this stuff is up it's growing really fast it's about a foot tall now gonna let it probably get between 18 and 24 inches and then we're gonna let the chickens do their thing on this stuff but i'm super happy with how well this is filled in how fast it's growing and how healthy it's looking and the great thing about this sorghum sedan grass in particular is that it grows faster than the weeds now i have a little bit of a pigweed issue in this no-till plot and it stems back to when we added more compost i think it was last fall my wife's uncle's over here with the bucket and he didn't mean to but he kind of got a little deep with the bucket and i think he stirred up some old weed seeds anyway i battled pigweed a little bit when we were growing onions here throughout the winter and into this spring hand pulled a ton of pigweed out of there there was still a little bit in there and i saw some germinating when this stuff was germinating as well but it outgrows the pigweed and so that pigweed did germinate but now it's getting shaded out and we're gonna you know hopefully reduce that pigweed weed seed bank by having this nice cover crop there behind that beautiful cover crop plot we've got this nightshade plot here this first row we've got some extra indeterminate tomatoes we planted we end up just caging these because we didn't know how long they were going to make it getting a little bit of leaf curl on some of those getting a good bit of fruit on some of those i think that's the orange peach variety i'm looking forward to trying that one so i hope those make it so some of these are looking a little rough some of them are hanging in there we'll just see what happens got a little blank space there where we lost a few it is what it is hopefully we just get a few tomatoes to try off these so we can um, give a grade on these few varieties we have planted then we have our peppers here and most of them are doing pretty good we got a few runt plants in here i don't know why that one there isn't doing that great it just doesn't look that great that's the same variety right there same variety right there that one there is just a weak link i reckon anyways this is the pueblo pueblo chili variety and i think we've got some fruits in here i've been eating some of these there's one needs to be picked there's some more right there these are really really good it got a little bit of heat to them but not too hot got our buena mulata purple cayenne peppers here those are doing good i got a few of those turning red down there i need to pick that's another buena mulata that looks pretty pitiful same variety you know one plant looks good one plant doesn't that's why we like to plant a couple plants per variety just in case that happens got our big gem peppers here these are looking really good just waiting on these to turn they're loaded as you can see nice big hot peppers there down on the end of that row we've got our eggplants which i didn't think were ever going to bloom but they're finally blooming and i think i may have had one get too big on me while i was gone that one there looks pretty massive probably need to get that out of there but that one behind it looks like it might have some promise in a few days so beating some eggplant pretty soon happy with that moving on to more peppers we've got our santa fe grand peppers here lots of them 
and we're just waiting on those to turn some of the bottom are turning we'll be making lots and lots of good hot sauce with these all these plants are looking really really good no runts in this bunch this variety always seems to do really really well for us then as far as our sweet peppers go we've got our cornito giallo peppers here which are loaded down with fruits and some of them are finally starting to turn looks like that one there may be completely orange or yellow Oops. I accidentally picked that one it'll be all right that one there looks beautiful so we're waiting on those to turn and we'll probably be harvesting a good many of those tomorrow excited to try those we've been eating quite a few of these x3r bell peppers here i left a few of them there to turn red as we can see that one there is kind of starting to turn red a little bit but these make some nice big big blocky bell peppers really happy with this variety so far then we've got our determinate tomatoes here and we're going to assess all these varieties probably on the next video but we've been picking a few of these got a few ripe ones these varieties on this row here look a little scraggly a few of them do the ones over here look phenomenal i'll show you we're getting some of these some beautiful looking tomatoes there that are turning there's one there there's a monster right there so we're about to get some really good production gonna be a lot of canning going on with these here like i said on an upcoming video we'll assess all these different varieties size disease resistance all that kind of good stuff and then i've told you all a bunch about these torangina cherry tomatoes here got to pick those again they are everywhere on the back side of those determinant tomatoes we've got our little hedgerow of basil here there's a kitty cat there too and we need to get the hedge shears after this pretty soon within the next day or so get rid of those flower heads and that would just make it more and more bushy so lemon basil there and purple flowers of the thai basil and then we've got the genovese basil on the end once we start shaping this up with those head shears it'll get more full and it'll start just looking like a beautiful hedgerow of basil over here we've got kale that's still kicking this darker board kale that stuff just keeps on keeping on with all this heat and everything just keeps producing more and more we've got a lot of flowers here that are blooming got some binary zinnias that are blooming there got some cosmos blooming there got some celosia blooming there lots of good stuff going in this plot we've got our giant marigolds that are blooming i probably need to run another line of string on that trellis looks like the yellow ones are fastest to bloom haven't seen any orange blooms yet but probably will pretty soon so those are beautiful then our giant sunflowers here i don't know what i did wrong but these are not going to be giant sunflowers as you can see here that puppy there already has a head on it now it could be wrong on this but from my experiences growing sunflowers when they make that top bloom like that right there that's pretty much as tall as they're going to get now we're getting a lot of side blooms on these so these will be some nice full pretty plants but not going to get near as tall as we thought they were going to get and that could be due to something i did wrong or it just could be i don't know they had plenty of water fertilized them they had everything they should have needed i don't know why they bloomed way faster than they were supposed to these things were supposed to get really really tall one was like a minnesota state record one was a west virginia state record i believe but they're not going to set any records here but at least they'll provide some beauty to the garden feed the pollinators some and beside those sunflowers we've got our three rows of sweet taters that we planted on that last video and this was the one thing that i was most worried about leaving for three days now i did water these really really good with the overhead tripod before we left and surprisingly these were all looking great when we got back i guess i gave them enough water we're starting to see some new growth on a lot of these looks like our slip survival rate is really really high so happy with what i'm seeing here might have to do a little weeding in there just a little bit before we side dress and heal these things and pull that straw back around them behind that we've got our pumpkin plot and most of these plants are still hanging in there pretty well they're very very thirsty been having to run the drip a lot on these but uh, they're hanging in there 
getting some pretty good sized fruits those jade night pumpkins still haven't turned the color they're supposed to turn but we've got a lot of them in there same thing with our fairy tales i can't find one right this second but there's a good many of those in there they still haven't turned tan it's a little ways to go on those then we have our giant pumpkins over here with our giant pumpkins here we've got a few that look like they're done growing and that's my fault but we've got a few we're holding out hope for we'll start out with this field pumpkin right here from what I understand, once it turns completely orange like that, it's pretty much done growing. That one's probably only 10 pounds, maybe 15 pounds, probably closer to 10. A beautiful pumpkin, but nothing giant about it. And then we've got this Atlantic Giant here, which is growing pretty fast, getting pretty big, but it's starting to turn color on the top there a little bit. And if it's anything like these others, once it starts turning a little bit, it's kind of done growing. So I don't know what's gonna happen with this one. We'll keep a close eye on it. I don't think we're gonna get a thousand pounds out of this one or anything, but we may make a pretty decent sized pumpkin. Here's another Atlantic giant, and this one split on us, but it looks like it's healed over a little bit. Not the prettiest thing you've ever seen, but uh, it's still growing a little bit. I don't think it's gonna get as big as that other one, but it's hanging in there. Much like that other field pumpkin, this field pumpkin here is pretty much done. I think this one might be a little bit bigger than that other one. This is the one where I pruned the vines too aggressively and it just didn't have enough juice running to it so it is what it is pretty little pumpkin though this is our promising one as far as the field pumpkins go and we might get close to uh, 40 pounds with that one still nothing close to any record but an improvement over that one we learned a few things between these two here which is important now this is probably my best one right here this is another Atlantic giant and this one is the biggest one we have and it's showing that it's still growing no signs of turning color or anything so I'm holding out most hope for this one hoping we can get close to 500 pounds or so all right now going back to the back half of the property we've got two more plots left on the tour so as you can probably tell we've got cucumbers and summer squash in here we'll start out with the summer squash and What's surprising to me is how well these plants are hanging in there considering how long they've been planted and how long we've been getting squash off of them. Usually our first planting of summer squash would start looking a little sorry by now. now these plants look great, We're still getting a lot of production off these. So we've got this Enterprise variety which is a yellow straight neck. See there, that guy's ready to harvest. Loads and loads of production off these. We've only got, I'd say, five or six plants of those in here. And then down here, we've got this Costata Romanesca zucchini. I'll show you one of those right here. That one's almost ready to be picked. And those are hanging in there real well too. Haven't seen hardly any squash bugs on these, hardly any leaf-footed bugs. Goes back to that Azera. Seems to be working really, really well for us. And I'm gonna plant another round of summer squash, but I haven't been in a huge hurry because these plants are looking so good and hanging in there so well. Then we've got our arch panel trellis. It's full of cucumbers. We've got Corinto over here. Those are the tall ones. Supremo over here. The pickling ones are a good bit shorter, but they've been producing really, really well. There's a nice little Supremo pickling cuke right there. These Corintos are getting to where they're real easy to pick when they're hanging down like this. This is where I did see a few of those leaf-footed bugs up at the top here where I can't really spray because I don't want it to rain down on my head i noticed a few there but none down here below where i am able to spray now one thing i am noticing on a few of these plants this kind of yellow ring around the leaves and i don't know that i've ever seen that before it doesn't seem to be bothering the production too much plants still look healthy they're still growing still producing a ton of cucumbers there as you can see but I'm seeing that on a few of those leaves there. Now, I haven't done a lot of research yet on this particular leaf discoloration issue. My guess, my hunch would be that it's some kind of minor nutrient deficiency. 
but it's not really that impactful because plants are looking healthy they're growing producing well so it's not causing a whole lot of issues for us i'm not really worried about it but if you've seen something like this on cucumbers before let me know or if you know what it is definitely share with us in the comments below and then last but certainly not least on the tour we have our beautiful solstice sweet corn here and we're getting mighty mighty close to being able to enjoy some of this the height on all the plants is kind of evened out a good little bit some of these silks are starting to turn brown not all of them you can see some of the plants there still a little ways to go still getting pollinated but some of those there we can start to see some good brown almost dry silks now in the last video when we talked about this corn i mentioned to you that i was a little bit worried how short it was and i should have looked this up before the video but thankfully some of you guys shared the information with me looked at the product page and this is how tall it's supposed to get somewhere between about five and a half to six foot tall so we're right where we're supposed to be as far as plant height goes and when we were on the way back from the coast earlier today not too far from the house here i saw a field of commercial sweet corn and i'm not kidding you this stuff might have been three foot tall they had all the wagons out there they were harvesting it so i guess it was worth picking or else you know they wouldn't have fooled with it but it was the shortest sweet corn i had ever seen this here is at least twice as tall as what that was but anyway with this corn after i realized okay that's how tall it's supposed to get and then a few days later these ears start filling out get some good size on them i wasn't worried as much i think we're going to do all right now we will have some staggered harvest here because we had to replant it's not all going to get ready at one time which makes it a little aggravating because i'd like to you know put it all in the freezer at one time but we'll just work with it we'll eat some we'll freeze some until we kind of work our way through all of it now i also was thinking when we get back from the coast today is saturday i was thinking a sunday i gotta be putting up corn i thought it was going to be ready and i pulled an ear earlier you see the silk on there looks pretty brown and crispy but when we pull it back here we can still see we've got a little bit of a ways to go waiting on those yellow kernels to turn yellow those kernels hadn't completely filled out yet got good pollination here on the ear got a nice full ear but the kernels haven't really plumped up yet we can still give it a try though mm. man that's sweet that's gonna be some good corn whenever it gets ready i'm thinking about maybe three or four more days sure would help if we could get a good rain this is a stage where you really got to pour the water to it if we don't get any rain tonight i'll probably let the drip run all night on this tomorrow maybe all day maybe all night soak it in good give it plenty of water so those kernels can get nice and plump mm. i have to be careful i have corn all over my face but the nice thing about these augmented super sweet varieties they're really sweet because they have those super sweet kernels but they also have a really nice crunch to them that's what i like about them the texture of them is really nice in addition to the sweetness as well so i hope you enjoy the garden tour today kind of setting the stage for what's going to be coming up on the next few weeks of videos a lot of harvesting will be going on hopefully we'll be processing this corn on one of those videos got a pretty ominous looking cloud right there looks like i'm about to get wet which i'm happy about we could sure use some rain it's crispy around here but i hope you enjoyed the tour and don't forget to let me know if you've seen that on cucumber leaves before and if you know what it is if you're watching on youtube make sure to check out our affiliate links below a lot of great companies we use in our gardens here at lazy dog farm even got some coupon codes for some of those companies so you can take advantage of those discounts don't forget to go check out our website lazydogfarm.com where we've got hats shirts garden blog recommended products recipes all kind of good stuff over there you did enjoy this video make sure to subscribe hit that notification button like and share and we'll see you next time right here at lazy dog farm well mm -hmm. by the beauty of your life